already. You wouldn't want Mark with a Mr. Green, would you? Yeah, I would. Wouldn't mind it a bit. Sam, get your feet out of the way. Just listen to that meter tick. Shut up, your meter. She'll be right down. Good morning, Mr. Lewis. Oh, hello, John. You're losing Marcy today, huh? She's not dying, you know. She's just going to Chicago. Oh, Sam, stop shouting. <laughs> That's the year she wanted to be an actress. Pretty good, too. Oh, I remember this. Remember the summer she won it? Most popular girl at Camp Wadahami. Oh, Mother, you're an angel for helping me with all this. I'll finish you. Just sit down and talk to me. No, oh, I'll help. How I'm going to get all these clothes in here, I'll never know. Does this go? Yeah. Did Rodney leave? Yes, uh, he wanted to come down to the train, Dad, but I thought that was silly. It's a working day. He's a nice boy. I uh, think now, Sam, uh, bring the things from the dresser, will you? We've all agreed that if this is what Marcy wants to do, she should do it. Well, I just thought maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea if... She stayed and married him. What do you want, please? Oh, I'll tell you. Oh, he's sweet, Dad, but it's strictly a business arrangement. Oh, that's too bad, because I think... Go, that... go sit down, dear. I gave him an idea for his canning factory to can whole family dinners. They come in sets, everything from soup to dessert. Hey, that's a wonderful idea. It's working out, too. Darling, doesn't your head ever get tired of these things? Mine does. Oh, before I forget, I ordered the stove, and if they don't bring it on Monday, you better call them, Mother. Will do. Let me see, I canceled my speech at the advertising club. Uh, oh, my robe. When the gardener puts in the dahlias, tell him not to put him so close to the fence. Well, that's your department. Uh -huh. Oh, and before I forget, we've got a credit of $3.50 to the meat market. If you go down there, Mother, ask for Marty. Marty? He must be new. Yeah. And I was thinking, Daddy, when you buy your new suit, ask him to show you some pinstripes. I think they'd look good on you. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. And guess where I put your pipe cleaner? Where? In your top desk drawer. Well, it'll be nice having them where they belong. Well, now you two take care of yourself while I'm away. Oh, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. Yes, that's it. Well, we better stop. The taxi's waiting for us. What's the hurry? The taxi can wait. Oh, we're going to miss you, honey. Well, I'm going to miss you, too. I might be back. Maybe they'll turn me down. No, they won't. But let me give you some advice. Don't give them a million suggestions your first day. You know, don't take over all at once. They've probably been getting along fine up until now. And when you go in for your interview, just say, no, sir, and yes, sir. Will you remember that? Yes, sir. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Marcy Lewis. Sit down, Miss Lewis. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams. Um, tell me about your parents. They're living. Tell me, uh, what made you decide to become an airline stewardess? I had a friend who was one. I see. She... Yes? She likes it. You know, Miss Lewis, sometimes girls who are very well adapted to other things aren't quite suited to this kind of work. Oh, it's no reflection on the individual. 95% of our applicants are rejected. You mean I'm not accepted? I'm afraid not. You see, we're looking primarily for girls who like to meet people and take care of them. A stewardess is the greatest salesman an airline can have. We've got to be very but particular. But you're absolutely right, Mr. Williams. If you had a girl who was tongue-tied and couldn't take care of people, you'd have the passengers at each other's throats. And I love meeting people, and I love flying. You know, an airplane is more than just a piece of metal. It's, it's a home in the air. That might be a wonderful slogan for our company. Your home in the air. If you don't like that one, Mr. Williams, I've got a lot of other slogans. I've wanted to be an airline stewardess ever since I can remember. Aviation is the most exciting thing in the world. You know, God didn't mean people to be strangers. And with commercial aviation, people all over the world are becoming neighbors. Let me tell you about my uncle that used to fly in the last war. He was my mother's brother, but you won't believe this. When he started to fly... June, you go to dormitory DC-3. That's the first row. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I'm Marcy Lewis. I'm Ann White, and this is Miss Wells. Hello, Miss White. Hello, Miss Wells. Hello. You're assigned to dormitory DC-6. That's the second room down. Thank you. I think you'll find everything you need there. Thank you very much. Uh, Joyce Davis?
Hi. Hi. My name's Jan Baker. Hi, Marcy Lewis. Oh, welcome. Not oh, I'm exhausted. I wonder which one's mine. Take any bed. I feel like an old timer. I've been here ten years. Mind if I take the one that's yours? No, we're probably the oldest friends here. Hey, he's cute. Is he yours? Mm-hmm. Jan with my highest esteem. Roger's not very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't found what I've forgotten yet. Oh. Hello, I'm Alice Raymond. I'm from Memphis. I'm Jan Baker. That's cute. Oh, and that's Marcy Lewis. Hello, Marcy. Hi. Oh, the clay, isn't this cozy? Sleepy, honey? Hello. Oh, hello. I think I belong here. My name is Kathy Hunter. Hi, Kathy, honey. This is Jan. That's Marcy. Hello. Hi. Hello. Help yourself to a bed. Oh, thanks. I oh, can I'm sure really use one. I'm dead. Can I have your attention, please? Will you get your things unpacked immediately and report to Miss Friday in 15 minutes? Oh! Oh! Airline service involves safety, capability, efficiency, and courtesy. A stewardess must not only make a good first impression, but a lasting one. Now, your first duty is to go directly to the cockpit, where you'll clean the captain's earphones and radio mouthpiece with exuberol. And I'll show you how that's done. A little on the cotton. Very simple. Phew! <laughs> on a Convair, you'll work alone. On a DC-6, there are always two stewardesses. All right, Miss Wells. Oh, honey, there's nothing to this at all! Oh. I hope I didn't smoke that needle wall at your tails. Marcy, what the... Marcy! Mm. What's that rule about air masses? Oh, Alice. Since the general motion of the atmosphere in the United States is toward the east, the polar and arctic air masses generally, generally move toward the southeast. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, girls, I came here today to congratulate you. But after looking you over, I think I should congratulate our passengers. <laughs> There's a lot of hard work ahead of you, and a lot of fun. I won't keep you from it any longer. In case you're mildly curious about your assignments, they're in the next room. <laughs> Well, this time tomorrow we'll be on our own flight. I can't believe it. Attention, please. Flight 485 leaving for now. Oh, that's that's me. Don't worry, Kathy. Oh, yes. You're not going to an execution. Oh, I know, but I'm afraid I'm suddenly going to forget everything. Oh, no, you're not. You're not nervous. I'm not. Well, then why are my knees shaking? Oh, Jan. Goodbye, boy. Goodbye. Take care, Alice. Attention, please. American Airlines flight 576 for Cleveland. Now ready at 87. That's me! All aboard, please. Now, now, you're both going to be all right. You don't, uh, don't, don't let anybody know that you're nervous and don't let anybody know that you're scared. I guess I better get aboard. Goodbye, Jan. Goodbye, Alice. Now take care now. Bye. Don't you want your suitcase? Oh, that's right, honey. Don't be nervous. I'm not. Good night. Let Cleveland be nervous. The Eastman Tower calling American operations. American operations. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Point killer. 283 is on the ground, Joe. All right. As I was saying, it was the most beautiful two-wing job you ever saw. I had smooth air all the way and was all set for a two-point landing. What happened? Her mother walked in. Oh, all right. <laughs> Stuart, it's Marcy Lewis reporting for duty. Meteorologist Hawkins. Flight dispatcher Brown. Williams, charge of crew schedule. Alice and radio operator. At ease, men. You're not going to fly in this weather. 
But it's beautiful here. Ah, but you're not flying here. You're going to fly to Nashville. What's the weather in Nashville, Mr. Hawkins? I don't know, sir. I'll look in the paper. They're expecting a tornado, sir. Mm. But I love tornadoes. I've been out with the operations crew in Chicago. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. Hello, Hi. fellas. We've checked you in at a downtown hotel so you can find an apartment. Thank you. You'll go out in flight 783. 783. Report back here tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock sharp. 11 o'clock. Synchronize your watches, men. <laughs> We're expecting big things of you. Roger. Over. Out. <laughs> <laughs> under the axle, I think you'd get a better leverage. Yes, but this is a bumper shack. Well, will you please hurry? I gotta be at the airport in ten minutes. I'm going as fast as I can. I don't think there's enough of a fulcrum. Look, lady, I've been jacking these cars all my life. Oh, I'm gonna be so late. Rob in the cradle of the sea. Can I give you a lift? Oh, wonderful. Here. Oh, thank you. Still say you've got the wrong jack. I've never been late for a flight. Oh? Oh, I'm a stewardess. You see, a stewardess must not only create a good first impression, but a lasting one. Oh, really? Would you mind driving just a little bit faster? Oh, no. An airline service involves safety, capability, efficiency, and courtesy. Do you do much flying? Only do you a like bit. it? Yeah, Me too. Not... No other way to travel. You know, I'm not really happy unless I'm in the air, taking care of my passengers and crew. It gives you a feeling that you're, well, indispensable. You know, I never realized that a stewardess was so important. Planes don't fly without us. How about uh, pilots? Shelters. Well, I can't thank you enough. Well, I wouldn't have missed it for anything, Miss... Um... Oh, Lewis, Marcy Lewis. Marcy Lewis. Maybe we'll meet again sometime. I hope so, Miss Lewis. All right, thank you. Is that all right? Bye. Bye. Chauffeurs. Attention, please. American Airlines Flight 183 from New York and Buffalo. Now arriving at gate five. Number one, sterilize captain's microphone.
Attention. Attention, please. American Airlines Flight 783 leaving for Nashville. Now ready at gate four. All aboard, please. Your clearance slip. Oh, thanks. Have a nice trip. Wait a minute. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, I I'll write to you. Goodbye. Goodbye. What can we do for you? Oh, well, well, I'm afraid that I don't I don't speak whatever your name is. Well, you see, my vina company here is She had a stewardess. Would you hold the baby, please? Oh, yes. Isn't she sweet? It's a boy. Miss, how about something to eat? Oh, thank you very much. I just ate. Oh, I forgot. Uh, take the baby, please. Now, don't anybody go away. Oh, and everybody fasten your seatbelts. Hurry! Oh, that's what's been on my mind. Now I remember. The, the tower has been asking me to take off. Now then, if it won't inconvenience you, I'd like to leave. Hmm? All right. Was you a little rough on her? Well, that one needs a lesson. I think she's kind of cute. She's darling, fellas. Now, how about moving that ship? Magazine? Yes, please. Magazine? Here, yeah, May I have a well, pillow, please? Oh, yes. Wouldn't you like to take your hat off and be more comfortable? Thank you so Miss, much. if it isn't too much trouble, oh, I'd like some it. lunch. <laughs> well, of course, I'm going to serve right away. Uh, here's something for you to read. Time's lunch. That's what I wanted to talk about. Well, you see, 
there was so much excitement and confusion, and then one of the passengers said he was hungry, and then I went to look. I forgot to it's check. Not the food. Yes, sir. What? Yes, sir. Oh, of all the stewardesses in this country, I had to get to you. What I'd oh, like I'm to know sorry. is, what have I done to do? Hi, Sally. A stewardess's job is to make a good impression. Now, of course, I'm only a chauffeur. But what I'd like you to know is what an impression you've made and how indispensable you've been. How do you go back for instruction? Right. Those passengers have to be fed. You know what Five, that seven, means? Eight, three, that means we three, have to go back to the airport. That's 15 child. minutes long. Then Ooh. land is 10 minutes long. So we then we'll get ahead off ahead a half an hour later, then we can start all okay. over again. It's an hour lost, and you're sorry. Maybe we won't have to. But you didn't write. I suppose things like this happen often. I've never seen this happen before. But don't judge by me. I've only been with the company for 15 years. Are they terribly upset? Well, you know how it is, schedules and all that nonsense. Look, if this aeroplane ever reaches Nashville, Mr. Thomas, the operations chief there, is very anxious to see you. He is, huh? Well, goodbye again. Why do they get dames like that? He's a menace to commercial aviation. Take it easy, Mike. Well, you're like a flying bus boy. Fellas, your lunches are packed. Would you like to make your airplane fly now? We have other planes to land. Yeah. Pretty sore. Sore? He wanted to land it by parachute. Thanks for everything, Margie. Goodbye. We enjoyed the trip. Goodbye. Well, I don't know, Mike. This is a pretty serious thing. We can't just overlook it. Well, I'm not asking you to overlook it, Tommy. I just hope that you won't be too hard on it, that's all. Sure, she was excited. It was her first flight. She's great with passengers. Well, I'll see. Thanks, Tommy. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Come over here, Miss Lewis. You know who I am? The whole airline knows who you are. Aviation stocks are tumbling. I said I was sorry. I tried to take care of all the passengers. I did everything I could to make them feel at home. Maybe I tried too hard, but anyway, I tried. Well, I don't mind. I can go back to Havenville. Furthermore, I'm gone by bus. Goodbye. Miss Lewis, you'd better check your schedule. Your next flight goes out in an hour. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. I promise you, you won't be sorry. Well, I hope not. You're oh. flying with Mike Jameson. Oh. Well, anyway, thank you. And, uh, don't forget the lunches. No, sir. Captain Jameson. Oh. You'll be disappointed to know that I'm not being fired. 
Oh, you don't say. Mr. Thomas was very understanding. He felt it could have been worse. Yes, you could have forgotten your airplane. the Chicago Los Angeles run. Oh, Willie. That came through for you, too. Oh, thanks. Well, this is from my roommate. We're going to be on the same run together. She's going to meet me in Chicago. You better get started. You're scheduled to leave at 3 o'clock. Come on, I'll buy some coffee. Okay, Mike. Me, too. Anything the matter? No, nothing. I, I just got my apartment furnished. I'll see you before you go. Six nine Chicago Midway Tower. Chicago Tower. Go ahead, American Flight 369. American Flight 369 in range of shoreline. Go ahead with landing instructions. You're number three to land on runway 22L, wind southwest five. Call on base leg. American Flight 369. We'll be flying the Mercury run to Hollywood. You love Hollywood, Jan. It's a wonderful place. Everything out there is touched with a kind of magic. Gee, it sounds wonderful. Oh. When were you there? This will be my first trip. Oh, honestly, Marcy. What? United Airlines mainliner service, flight 608 from Los Angeles. Now arriving at gate two. Take a look at all the passengers on board. Mm -hmm. Why? Did anybody leave? 
No, but there's a man named Michael Lawrence I've got a feeling about. What kind of a feeling? I need two milks. <coughs> Nothing, except I think he's a VIP. The list didn't say anything about a very important person. Well, he isn't listed. It's just a feeling. Sort of an intuition. Yeah, sort of. Think it's too early to get the desserts out? Are you ready to serve? Mm-hmm. Now, Marcy, these intuitions of yours... Where is he? Up front. Top of his head looks fine. I'll take his dinner and let you know. Thank you very much. Here's your dinner, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you enjoy your dinner, Mr. Lawrence? Yes, thank you. Did you have enough? Yes, thank you. Would you like some more hot coffee? Mm -hmm. What? No, thank you. This plane is going to be 48 hours late. Well, that's nice. You're awake. Oh, well, so am I. What's your name? Natalie, what's yours? My name's oh, Mike. I'm terribly sorry that she disturbed oh, you. Oh, that's all right. She got lonesome, I guess, and needed somebody to talk to. Don't you think you better go to sleep now? I'm not the least bit sleepy. Oh, why don't you let us sit there a minute? She's okay. Oh, are you already. sure she won't no, disturb you? No. Don't you think Mike is handsome? Well, I... Yes, I, I do. Wouldn't you like me to tell your story? I don't think so, thank you. Have you ever flown before? Oh, yes. I love to watch the stars. You do? Yeah, well, there's the Big Dipper out there. See it? And there's the Milky Way. Did you know that the Big Dipper scoops up all the milk that passes through the sky? Did you know that, Mike? Well, actually, the Big Dipper, or Ursa Major, as it is called, is used very little to scoop up milk. For many years, the sailors have been using it uh, to find Polaris, the North Star. That's the beacon light that guides them safely home from voyages all over the world. <laughs> you see that group of stars over there that resemble a big chair? That's Cassiopeia. It's known as the Seated Lady. Further south, just out of sight of the Pleiades. Long ago, the Babylonians called them the Many Little Ones. The ancient Greeks called them the Seven Sisters. And the American Indians, they were known as the Seven Brothers. Do, do you know about the men in the moon? I don't think Mr. Lawrence can answer that question, unless Mr. Lawrence has been to the moon. I can tell you a little about the moon, Natalie. I've been there in a telescope. If you had a house on the moon, you'd never have to clean it, because there's no dust up there. And you wouldn't need any glass in your windows because there's no rain or wind to keep out. And you can't hear any noise up there. That would be nice. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Don't you think you ought to go to sleep now? I think I could if I had my dog with me. Where is he? He's up in front with his suitcases. Oh, well, you see, Natalie, I'm afraid the company can't allow animals back here. What's his name, Natalie? Poochie. Poochie? Well, 
Isn't that a coincidence? Only dogs named Poochie are allowed back here. Oh. I'll go get him. Thank you. She's very pretty, isn't she? She's very what? Pretty. Oh, yes, I guess she is. Here he is, Natalie. Oh, Poochie. Now, let's go back to your seat, huh? Can I stay with Mike? Oh, why don't you let her stay here? There's plenty of room, really. There's Was no it trouble. all right? Sure, no oh, bother fine, at all. all right. Get her a pillow. A blanket. We'll tuck her in there. There we are. All right, Natalie, now go to sleep now. Just like you're at home. There. The blanket tucked in there. Yeah. Oh, there we are. Lately. Yeah, I've read the rules. A cookie says we have to use our heads. There was a little girl who couldn't sleep. Now she has her dog and everybody can sleep. What's the harm in that? <laughs> Wish I'd gotten a chance to say goodbye to Mike. Who? Oh, your VIP. That is. You know, I can't believe we're in Hollywood. I bet Kathy's rented us a bungalow. Hope it isn't too fancy. Just a nice little place with a little backyard where we can lie out. How many times an hour Rick's sign goes on? The answer is 900. Oh, that's awful. I didn't mind that. What made me mad was that at 417 the sign went off and I didn't have a thing to do. I had the craziest dream. I dreamt all night long people were knocking at our door. You weren't dreaming. It seems that the former tenant of this dungeon was an exceedingly popular girl named Bubbles. Her friends kept trying to drop in all night. Well, why didn't you wake me? They wanted bubbles. I'll get it. Bubbles doesn't live here anymore. Yes, I know. Are you Marcy Lewis? Yes. Telephone for you downstairs in the hall. I'm not back in an hour. There is no phone in the hall. Yes, this is Marcy Lewis. Who? Oh, I see. Who is it? Miss Hale. Yes, Miss Hale. Oh, dear. Something wrong? If you'll wait a minute, I'll give you the full report. I lost your time. But it was my fault. Jan had nothing to do with this. You see, I was... Yes, Miss Hale. Yes, I understand. All right, I'll come in this afternoon. Goodbye. You're in trouble, huh? How do you spell catastrophe? Well, now, let me see. What? Yes, who's been grounded for a week. Oh, no. Yes. Poochie had to pick a woman who collects cats. She reported me. Well, I don't know what we're going to do. You're not going to do I anything, Leah. You are not. This is on me. 
Why did you? Well, I'm not worried, Jan. What I did was right. It just turned out wrong. It certainly did. I'm just afraid they're going to find out they can fly without me. Oh, I'm going to land off this business. Yes. I'm sorry it's making such a mess. We're just having it land. Oh, I know it's terrible, but honestly, Marcy, I couldn't find anything better. You mean this isn't a joke? Well, well, we all live in jokes like this. There's a housing shortage. I can well believe it. You know, last night she wouldn't come in until I turned the lights. Got She's got it. Well, there goes the housing shortage. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. There are four of us. And if we pool what we're paying right now, we can have a lovely little house. That sounds wonderful. What do you say? Oh, I'd say yes. Yes, indeed. Now we can invite more than one boy to come. <laughs> yes. Listen, let's talk about it over lunch. Oh, where are we? Right. Oh, there's a wonderful restaurant where we all hang out. Oh, good. Well, let's go. Marcy! What? Where's your hat? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll get dressed in a hurry. Jeez, it's a cute place. You'd never mistake the cooking for mother's, but the prices are reasonable. You mistake it for my mother. She's an awful cook. Look, let's order right away. I can't wait to start looking for a house. Mm. Where is the best place to live? We're going to have to take anything we can get. You know, Alice and I have to fly this afternoon, so if you'll drop us off at the airport, you can take the car and pick up a map and then good luck. Good. Mm. It's a shame about you being grounded, Marcy. Well, mm. that's what I get for taking an interest in a small child. We should get a look at that small child. Mm. Oh. Well, that's not what you think at all. He's some kind of a scientist. He communes with time and space and things. Yeah, it's just like a cousin of mine from South Carolina. They finally put him away. What does he look like? Oh, he's a cute little old kid. Quiet, Alice. Oh, I don't know. He's, uh, he's tall. He has light hair. Well, looks like your scientist also communes with spirits. Excuse me. Don't stare. Hello. Hello. If you don't recognize me, it's because I'm out of uniform. You're out of uniform? Oh, of course. You're a uh, Poochie's friend. Oh, let's not go into that. I want to talk to you. Must be this apron. As soon as I put it on, everybody wants to talk to me. What are you, a fine bartender? Oh, that? No. I flew to Chicago to attend a research conference. Do bartenders have research conferences? Oh, no. The university sent me back. I do this because, contrary to public opinion, graduate research students have to eat. That's what I am, graduate research student. I see. I'm awfully glad. Why? Just confirms a feeling I had about you. What kind of a feeling? Oh, just a feeling. I'll be seeing you. What's that? Old Oak Road, Old Oak Lane. Seem to have misplaced Sunset Boulevard. What does it say on the map? And it says we're lost. Well, let me see. Now you'll have to drop everything and leave for London by tomorrow. Right, Mike. Tell them I'm airmailing a whole new advertising campaign. I want you to report to me as soon as you've met with Henley. This new campaign of yours is great. They're going to love it. I hope so. Now well, you better get going. What is this, Old Oak? Mm -hmm. Well, there it is. Good. Mm, now let me see. I have to left that turn. Okay. Yeah. Battery's dead. Oh. oh. So are we. I don't know where I'm staying yet. I'll cable you as soon as I get there. Okay, have a good trip, Otto. Thanks, Mike. Well, there's a the car. Hey! Hey, hey, wait a minute! Huh? Oh, Marcy, what the hell are you doing? Oh, you got away. What's the matter? The battery's dead. We need a push. Uh, sure it's the battery? I think so. Any gas in your tank? Yeah. Maybe start a stuck. Step out, I'll take a look at it. All right. Your battery's dead. Isn't it nice to have a man around? Will you give us a push? Uh, Get in the front seat, honey, and turn okay. the wheels that way. We're going left. Okay. Uh, turn the ignition on, put it in second, push your clutch in, and let it out, and we start to roll, okay? Okay. Well, can't you push any harder? <laughs>
the call of the wild again. That one was as bad as the other. It's a good thing this isn't a night fight. They'd both be baying at the moon. <laughs> Wish Roger were a wolf. What? Well, I do. My mother taught me how to handle a man who didn't treat me like a lady. Everyone who did. Want me to get it? No, I'll handle it. I've got a hunting license. Well, what do you say, baby? I got some pretty good connections in old Shy. Instead of sitting in that little old hotel room looking at those little old walls, you and me could be having lots of fun. Excuse me. Oh, no, wait a minute. Don't bother with that character. Look, come in. Here's the key to my suite. I'll expect you around 7. You'll have a little drinky, hang on the old feed bag, and you and I'll go on the turn. How does that sound, huh? Oh, boy. How about that little celebration? All right, what? you win. Seven o'clock. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> May I have your baggage checks? Uh, here we are, Chris. Yes, hi, Martha. Hi, bud. Pardon me. Haven't we met before? No, we haven't. And that line's had it. How's your battery? You must be the gardener. But you're not a gardener. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't recognize your dress. You didn't? <laughs> I mean, uh, dressed up. If you're not a gardener, what do you do? I'm in advertising. My name is Mike Tracy. Mike? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm Marcy Lewis. Hello, Marcy. Let's say, look. Uh, uh. If you didn't like Kevin, we met before, you're really going to hate this, but it happens to be true. I have to take an important client and his wife to dinner tonight, and my date is at home with the virus. Oh, uh, really, honest, uh, would you uh, like to join us? You could help me to spend that dollar you gave me. <laughs> oh, well, I believe you, but uh, I'm sorry, I just can't. Well, that's too bad. Maybe some other time. All right, and thanks again for the push. Bye. Hiya, Jack. Hi, Marcy. I missed your last two letters. I don't know you why. You must right be right Roger. Roger. Oh, you must be Marcy. I know it was you because it's Chicago. In California, it's Bill. Bill Marcy, who? Marcy, what are you oh, talking about? Oh, it's a Tony. About? I don't know. Bill, Tony. What is it? What's, what is what's going saying? on, Jan? Oh, well, I've checked this out, so I'll be seeing Oh, you're not going to leave now. Oh, yes, I have a date standing right over there. So you kids uh, have fun. Just wait till I get you alone. Jan, I want to talk to you. Oh, that's at least so you... Oh, that's fine. Here we go. Thank you very much. Mr. Tracy, mm -hmm. I found out that I haven't anything to do tonight. Oh? Would you mind dropping me by the public library? I'd love to. <laughs> Seven minutes late. Clock watcher, I'd like to present Miss Lewis, Mrs. Bellamy, Mr. Bellamy. How do you do, uh, do Mr. Bellamy? Uh, I'm afraid it's my fault. I had to get out of my uniform. Wait. Oh. What branch are you in? Uh, Miss Lewis is an airline stewardess. Oh, I had an out of the Navy. I've ordered champagne cocktails. I Good. hope you like them. Yes, I do. Well, here's to Mr. Bellamy's gardenia soap, which brings us all together on this pleasant occasion. Oh, no, I think we ought to uh, make a toast to Michael's lovely young lady. Thank you. Do you like being an airline hostess, dear? Oh, yes, I love it. I can't remember seeing you or Mr. Bellamy on any of my flights. Well, you young ones can have the airplanes. I'll stick to the ground. But I thought you were so interested in selling soap. What's that got to do with it? Well, does our airline use your soap? Well, I don't know. But you should know. You're letting a big customer get away. That's very true, my dear. But right now, selling one customer isn't our problem. We need to map out a whole new campaign. One that's just as effective as the last one. Mr. Bellamy, I think I have it. Yeah? Has everything. Color, appeal, educational value. Yeah, go on. Well, we run a series of ads going back to the origins of soap. Show how they made soap in the old days. We could use posters of the pioneers. Contrast these posters with the modern gardenia soap plant. I like that. That stinks. If I want to educate people, I'll build a college. All right, I'll find another approach. Well, I have an idea. I have a better one. Let's do it. Excuse me. Sir. Sorry we got involved in business. Oh, I didn't mind. Mr. Bellamy likes you, I can tell. <laughs> it's one thing about old Bellamy. He's got a tough exterior, but inside he has a heart of rock. He was a little rough on your idea. You know, I have an idea. And so have I. And it has nothing to do with gardenia soap. 
Oh, you're a wonderful dancer. You make me look good. That's the way girls should talk. The art of flattering men seems to be lost. Women can't seem to lie the way they used to. Oh, we do all right. You know, I really think I know what would appeal to Mr. Bellamy. Oh, honey, honey, look, the office is closed. Look, if you're so eager to sell gardenia so why don't you write him a letter? I'm sorry. That's the girl I've adored all these years. You see, if two people really love each other, these little spats can be patched up. Yes, Mike. I'm awfully glad the battery in your car ran down. We should celebrate every anniversary in a garage. Uh, where would you like to go from here? Oh, I don't care any place you like. Maybe we should get home to the children? Oh, I think the governess could take care of them all. Oh. <laughs> How many do we have? Six. Mm. <laughs> Brinky. I hate to leave you alone with all this stuff. The other kid's flying, too. I don't see how you can handle it. Well, at least they'll have time to load their things in the car before they leave. Yeah, what if the trunks get here? Well, old Mother Natasha will find a way. Look, you better get out of here before your passengers have to serve themselves. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow at the new house. Okay. Oh, and Marcy, that's my best suit. Don't put it on the floor of the car. All right, huh? all right. You know me. I don't make Yes, I do. You're new, huh? Yeah. Well, I guess you'll be wanting milk. Well, not right now. Would you do something for me? Sure, what? See the box up front? Yeah. Would you mind taking it out? No trouble at all. It's heavy. I'll watch it. Good morning. Moving in? Good morning, yes. I'm Bayview Bakery. Oh. Well, there are going to be four of us. We're going to eat a lot of bread. Yeah. Say, so, would you give us a hand? Pleasure, lady. Thank you. Morning. Hi, Mike. I'm late. I went down the wrong street. Oh, see, you're an angel to come over and help. Oh, I think we can manage. No neon signs? <laughs> Hello. Hey, that's quite a mansion you've got there. Well, Mike, what are you doing here? I just flew in from Boston, ran into jail at the airport. She told me you were having trouble, so here I am. Trouble shooter Tracy, they call me. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Mr. Lawrence, Mr. Tracy. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? <laughs> well, what's the problem? Well? Simple logistics. We move these from here to there. For you. Uh, <laughs> Careful, that one has got glass in it. Yeah, okay. room for a go-dunk? Mike! When did you get in? I got time for the Mercury run. That's wonderful. Yeah. Hey, what are you, a one-woman moving company? Well, not exactly. Mm -hmm, you look good. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, with Captain Jameson on the job, your trouble's over, ma'am. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, not at all. Tomorrow the milk will be on the house. Thank I'll you. I'll leave a cake for you when I come by in the morning. Thanks a lot. Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry. Mr. Lawrence, Mr. Tracy, Captain Jameson. All right, how do you do? Listen, Mike. Yeah. 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 Maybe we better go inside. Canning everything these days. Need us some family dinner. Everything from soup to dessert. A friend of mine cans those. Really? Mm -hmm. Speaking of eating, Marcy, I have the evening off. I thought maybe if you weren't oh, busy I'd tonight. Oh, I'd love to, Mike. I would. Well, wait a minute. I'll be right back. That tomcat again. I told you we'd have to get rid of him. Be careful. <laughs> Oops. What'll the children say? Hey, you really want six kids? Yes. Miss Lewis, in many ways, you're a very remarkable girl. Why don't we talk about it at dinner tonight? Marcy! 
Oh, you better go back to breaking dishes. Yeah? I got the curtains up, but I've got a couple pieces left over. They're kind of little. Oh, well, those are the tie backs. Here, I'll do that myself. Come on now, Skipper. Oh, thanks. Altitude's beginning to get me anyway. Tie backs, huh? Well, I don't know much about that. There's a lot that I do know that I want to talk to you about at dinner tonight. Can I rest for a minute, Mommy? Why, sure. Mommy? Oh, yes, we have some. Monty? Yeah, Mike? What else goes in the kitchen? Well, there's one more carton, and I know just where it is. Oh, Mike? Yep. Yeah. Oh, dear. This will never do, will it? Uh-uh. Well, um... You be Mike, uh, Mickey, and Michael. Mike, Mickey, and Michael. How's that? Why can't he be Mickey? Because I'm Michael. It couldn't be. Uh. I'm on 24-hour reserve. That must be the airport. They're the only ones that know the number. Hello? Yes, this is she. Oh, yes. All right, I'll be right out. Thank you. I have to fly to Dallas in 40 minutes. I'll run to the airport. Well, I have a car outside, thank you. Now, let me see. Flight bag. What do I do with my uniform? Oh, talk to one another, will you, please? Oh, yeah. Oh, Mike! Yeah, yeah. I'm Mike. Would you please unhitch the trailer for me? Yeah. Thank you. Well, I guess I'll be running along. So wonderful. Yeah, I'm really gonna have to go in the back door with this uniform on. I'll be grounded for good. Thanks a lot, fellas. Goodbye. So long. Keep your flaps up. This is wonderful. Did you do all this while How I was... Dallas? Well, the flight was canceled because of fog. Oh, no. I uh, haven't eaten yet, if you'd still like to have dinner. I don't think so. Where are you going? Look, this interior decorating is just a hobby with me. I'm a scientist. Well, I know you're a scientist, but what's the matter? Well, let's examine it scientifically, huh? All right. Premise. You needed some help. Yes. Argument. You got it. Well, I appreciate it. That phone call from the airport was very convenient. Kept things from getting too complicated. The coast clears, and you're back with some convenient fog. Oh, my. Conclusion? I think I'll stick to my test tubes. But... Right. You know, I didn't Would know... Would you mind turning out the light, Marcy? Turning out the light? It has to be dark. Dark for what? <sighs> now look, Professor. There we are. Professor, what is it? Living bacteria. It's called bioluminescence. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's beautiful. Would you mind explaining it to me? Well, I wouldn't mind, Marcy, but I don't think you'd understand it. Now, don't be a smug male. Tell me. Very well. What I'm doing is an experiment with intensity, which varies in proportion to the velocity of reaction of the oxidative enzyme luciferase accompanied by luciferin, which is a substrate. I warned you. <laughs> I must have missed something. <laughs> All right, let me explain it another way. Bioluminescence is a cold light 
Am I interrupting anything? Oh, Dr. Hardy, come in. May I present Marcy Lewis, Dr. Hardy? How do you do, Doctor? How do you do? I feel as though I know you. We used your books in my science classes. That's uh, a dirty trick to play on the young. Science <laughs> became my favorite subject. Oh, you've got a pretty fine instructor right here. He was the guest lecturer at the research conference in Chicago. But he didn't tell me. I suppose you didn't tell her about the Bricker Fellowship, either. Oh, I don't think Miss Lewis would be interested in that. Oh, but I am. Really? Of course she is. The Bricker Fellowship is awarded only once a year to an outstanding scientist. It's based on achievement and character. And this year, Mike is one of the nominees. Well, that's a great honor. Oh, it's very flattering, I think, too. If I win, it means a teaching job here. I go on with my experiments. I hope you do. I do, too. Do you think you will, Doctor? I'm not allowed to say I'm on the selection committee. Oh, would you like to hear my relativity joke? Oh, Doctor. Yes, I'd love All to. Right. Ask me to explain the theory of relativity. All right. Will you explain the theory of relativity? Well. When you're sitting in a dentist chair for five minutes, it seems like five years. But when you're holding a pretty girl in your lap for five minutes, it seems like five seconds. I see. Oh, when Einstein tells it, he gets belly laughs. He never gives up on <laughs> that story. Well, someday you'll you see. You bet. Someday it'll be one of the school traditions to talk about Dr. Hardy's relativity joke. <laughs> you love all of this, don't you, Mike? You mean the lab? Mm, the lab, the campus, your work. It shows in your face. It does? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm just a teacher at heart. Oh, that's wonderful. Now you're being polite. No, I'm not. You mention the word teacher to anybody, and right away they think of a little underpaid, absent-minded Mr. Chips character, wearing an alpaca jacket and surrounded by dusty books. They don't understand. But teaching is just about as close to immortality as you can come. You know, in every class that you teach, Someone will remember something you say. And because of it, his life will be changed a little. And he'll change someone else's life. And in that way, you become projected into the future. I'm lecturing. And you're not even registered. I'm registered, Mike. My mother was a teacher. Well, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. You'd like mother. Oh, I'm sure I would. You're not at all like I thought you'd be. I'm not? Uh-uh, not at all. I was brought up in a little college town. Really? Mm -hmm. I love this life. Some people think it's sheltered and unimportant. Oh, no. It's terribly important. I think and so. And very exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mike, I'm so glad we met. So am I. Well, if you don't mind, Doctor. Oh, I guess he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> date last night. Oh, we had fun. He's a very remarkable young man. What'd you do? Do you want some coffee? Mm-hmm. What'd you do last night? Learned about bioluminescence. Oh. Okay. Do you want some coffee, Jan? Mm-hmm. Please. in trouble again. What'd you do? He didn't say, but I did it. Hmm. Well, oh, take this upstairs. I worry myself to death sometimes. You know, maybe she shouldn't have learned Alice, about Alice, your breakfast? Yes. I can't eat. Miss Lewis, Mr. Tracy. Oh, I see. Tanner, Mr. How do you do? Osgood, How do you do? Mr. Parker, our photographer, Mr. Hamilton, head of our art department. How do you do? Gentlemen, this is our little Marcy. Won't you sit right down over here? We've <laughs> certainly got the hand to you, Miss Lewis. You do? It's all right, Marcy. We know all about it. We've heard from Bellamy. Oh, how is he? He's fine. Like a kid, full of enthusiasm. He's got the greatest advertising campaign in the history of his company lined up. Why, that's wonderful, Mike. Is it yours? No, yours. Mine? Didn't you write him a letter giving him an idea for gardenia soap? Oh, yes. Remember that night we were dancing in Chicago? You told me to write him a note? Uh-huh. Well, I did. You did? Mm-hmm. Did he like it? He's insane about it. 
And I use the word insane advisedly. He's talking bonuses. Honey, I spent 30 minutes on the phone this morning listening to him rave about this idea, and I don't even know what it's about. Well, it's a wonderful idea. It is. Uh, Miss Lewis, could you be a little bit more specific? Well, of course. That would be nice. Well, the idea is this. You've seen pictures of actresses, socialites, and athletes endorsing different things, and I was thinking, why not airline stewardesses? I know people are interested in us because they're always asking me about our work. And if you use pictures of airline stewardesses all over the world, it would tie in with the idea that gardenia soap is the same under all conditions. You like it? Like it? Like it? Honey, I think it's great. It's just great. That's uh, fine. Osgood, I want you to get an exclusive tie-up with the airline. We're going to use 24 sheets all over the country. Right. Hamelin, give me a layout for a series of radio commercials. Use the marriage angle. The airline stewardesses have gotten married. Oh, but they don't fly after they're married. They strike the marriage angle. We'll keep them single. CJ, don't let's forget to call Bellamy. Yes, good idea. Parker, I want you to use a different stewardess for every layout. We'll make it a gardenia girl of the month. Get your girls to start shooting art. We can use backgrounds all over the world, but wherever they are, they're using gardenia soap. Got it? Got it. One thing. Yeah? Who's going to be our first gardenia girl? <laughs> All right now, Marcy. Hold it. Good. One second now, Marcy. Got it. Hold it. Ah, that's good. Now let's have one for the road, huh? You can relax a second. Oh, I'm comfortable. Come in. Hi, kids. How's it going? Hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. Just finish. There you go. Got it? All right. No, this is fun. You and I are due for a long talk. Uh, American Airlines flight 455 following Douglas request weather. American Flight 455, this is Douglas Radio, Tucson, thunderstorm overhead moving east, Douglas overcast, visibility five miles. American Airlines Flight 455, out. We're setting down at Douglas. Two sugars, that's your... You can't do that. I've got a dinner date in Los Angeles. <laughs> now ain't that too bad. Better get your passengers ready. And don't give him any. <laughs> <laughs> well, the passengers are all taken care of. The bus just took them into town. I just checked with the hotel. They got room enough for them, but that's all. I'm afraid the crew will have to sleep here. I got a cot back there that you're welcome to use with. Well, thanks anyway. I'll stick with the troops. Uh, you mean tell me that's the only hotel around here? Well, there's the Adobe Inn, but that's no good. They're closed for the season. Uh, wait a minute. Old Hawkins is still there. Oh, I forgot. Phone shut off. If you want to take a chance, my car's outside. What do you say? Fine with me. Well, let's pick up Benson. We'll go around and take a look at it. Right. Thank you. See you. Thank you. See you later. We're sorry to intrude on you like this, but uh, our plane ran into a little weather. Well, the hotel's officially closed up, but uh, I guess I can accommodate you. Okay. You folks uh, want a room? Uh, two rooms. Well, shouldn't be any trouble. <laughs> you have 50 rooms to choose from. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Thank you. Flyers, eh? Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll have to dig you up some fresh linen. <laughs> uh, could we get something to eat? Oh, oh, I don't know. Uh, I, I won't even eat my own cooking, and I ain't very particular. Have you got any food? Oh, sure, lady. We got food. Well, if you show me the kitchen, I'll fix it something. Oh, I, I love to eat. Hey. <laughs> Come right this way. She cooks. Wow. Some more coffee, Benson? Mmm, I've had it. My compliments to the chef. Mm. Thank you. i better check on the weather. That's a good idea. Can I get you anything, Mr. Hawkins? Oh, no, thank you. I, I couldn't eat another bite. You. you know, that's the best meal I've had since the hotel closed up. Now, now you leave everything right here, and I'll, I'll clean it up in the morning. I, uh, I better go get started on your rooms. <laughs> <laughs> the nice old guy. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> there are only two pancakes left. Surely you can eat them. Oh, right? no, no, no. Got 
Gosh, I thought cooking like this was a lost art. <laughs> I love to cook. Now, ah, this is nice. You realize we've never really had a chance to talk alone before? I know. I can remember the time when you weren't very anxious to talk to me. <laughs> remember the first day when I give you a lift? When I forgot the lunch? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't figure out why you didn't let him fire me. Well, it was something you said in the car. Something I said? Mm hmm the first day. About pilots being chauffeurs? Oh, no, no. Oh, about not really being alive unless you're in the air. Oh. I felt that way ever since I was a kid. How long have you been flying, Mike? Mm hmm. I took my first flying lesson. I was about 15. Really? Mm hmm. An old crate with wings. <laughs> my old man found out about it and wailed the tar out of me. But it was too late. Why? Well, I got hung up in a cloud. I ran away from home and joined an air circus, barnstormed all over the country. Had moved to airline for a while. You did, man. Yeah. Consisted of one airplane and two engines. <laughs> <laughs> then the war came along and I joined up. You know, most people get tired of traveling around. But traveling affects me like, well, like some people are affected by money. The more I get, the more I want. I know. Sure you do. But a lot of people don't. You know, you and I are alike, Marcy. We both come from small towns where people live and die and never travel any farther than the corner barbershop. That can never satisfy me. People at home don't seem to understand. They seem to think I'm running away from something. Oh, I don't think you're running away from anything, Mike. I think you're running to something. Hey, that's it. Exactly. You know, Marcy, this is a great big world we live in, filled with many languages. And I want to hear all of them before I die. I want to meet as many people as I can and find out what makes them tick, what they talk about and what they think about. I don't want to miss anything. That's the way I feel, Mike. Yeah, this is C.R. Smith, your boss, Marcy Lewis. Hello. How do you do, sir? Miss Lewis, I'd like you to explain why I pay a high-priced public relations department to do a job that you've knocked off in your spare time. This campaign of yours is great. Sensational, I think is the word. That's the word, all right. You like it? It's crazy about it. It's the biggest thing that's happened to us since the reversible propeller. <laughs> Here, Marcy, wait till you get a look at these I'll pictures. Just the just wonderful. Oh, as quickly as possible. Sure. Good. 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 Oh, I forgot. I've got another appointment. Oh, isn't that too bad? <laughs> Thank you, Mac. We'll see you all later. Come on. Marcy, will you tell me something? What? What are you doing as a stewardess? I like it, Mike. Yeah, sure, it's great. But not for the rest of your life. I hadn't planned on being the oldest stewardess in the world. You are a most surprising girl. Has anybody ever remembered to tell you that? You don't fall into any of the ordinary layout patterns. You're wonderful to look at. In advertising, that's him. Most read, that's having you in sight. Most remembered, that's not having you in sight and wanting to. Marcy, you know, 
I think you'd like the kind of a life I live. It's almost like another world. The constant excitement of seeing your ideas come alive and start all kinds of wheels moving all over the earth. You get an idea today, and tomorrow what influences millions of people you'll never even see. People in South America, Bombay, England. There's nothing to match it, Marthy. You make it sound so wonderful, Mike. More wine? down in about 20 minutes. All right, bye. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to leave for a few minutes. What's wrong? What's wrong? That was Mike Tracy's photographer. He needs one more picture to airmail to the east tonight. I'll only be a few minutes. Oh, I'll drive you down. Now, look, you two stay and enjoy the party. I'll slip out the back way. Goodbye. Goodbye, doctor. Kind of a funny time to be taking pictures, isn't it? I don't like it either. Where'd you put my briefcase? Oh, it's upstairs on down the hall. Where's Tracy? You don't think that... I wouldn't put it past him. Hey, uh, Evening, Mickey. I'm Michael. You're Mickey. Uh, forgive me, Michael. Evening, Mike. Oh, yeah. Where's Marcy? Don't you know? Hmm. Should I know? Then did you tell your photographer to call her to work tonight? Parker? Did he call her? Yeah. He said he needed an extra picture tonight to send east. I'll bet he did. Don't you trust him? I wouldn't trust him with Whistler's mother. Oh, you wouldn't, huh? No. No? No. Mm. Fix a little drink, Marcy? No, thanks. Not even just a little teeny one? Nope. I don't know why I have to wear this. All the other pictures were taken in uniform. Yeah, I know. That's why I thought we'd add something different, you know, a little variety. Well, that's different what there is of it. Oh, we. Great. Yeah, but will I sell soap? Honey, you could sell mud. Anybody ever tell you that you're a very unusual girl, Marcy? Look, Mac, if you're in a romantic mood, go to the movies. I've got a house full of people waiting for me. Now, where do you want me? I, uh... I've known a lot of girls in my day, Marcy, but when I... Are you I... sure you asked me down here to take pictures? Why don't you sit down here and relax? I've got a couple the lights out. The doorbell. Just about one second. I'll set There's this. somebody at the door, Mac. Take it easy. Take it easy. Yeah. What's the matter, buddy? What are you doing? Come on, get your clothes on. I'm getting you, you out of here. Mrs. Corporal, what do you expect? Are you oh. just about that? You're one of the primitives. Marcy, what are you doing? I'm in taking that? Pictures. You think everything can be You're responsible you for all this. Right well, you, Marcy, you wouldn't be here. I'll remedy that right now. Come on, Marcy, I'm taking you home. Who do you think you're Now, look, I don't want to fight with you. I'll bet you do. Take it easy. Why should I? Fellas, now stop it! You stop it! Because I did a little boxing at college. Come on, get on your feet. I'm taking you home. Oh, you are, huh? Oh, Scene of Sunset Strip Brawl. Hmm. Well, this ought to sell a lot of gardenia hmm. soap. Boy, what a brawl. How can you joke about this? The phone's been ringing all morning. 
Mike Lawrence is being disqualified for his fellowship, Mike Jameson has been grounded, and Mike Tracy lost the Bellamy account, and I've been suspended. I'd say you've had a busy day. But, honey, worrying about it isn't going to help. Well, I'd just like to unscramble it. Darling, if you don't mind a suggestion, why don't you let them all alone before you get them all hanged? Hmm. Well, anyway, one good thing's come out of all this. What? Roger saw the paper this morning. He's informed me that we're to be married right away. Oh, he woke up. Ooh, I'm glad that's settled. <laughs> that's wonderful. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Jan. Just great. Anybody want some more coffee? Mm. Mm. Al? Oh, Won't you, you cup up, sweetie? Mm. Mm. Kathy? Mm -hmm. A little. Mm. How's the chest? Oh. I realize the fellowship depends partly on character, but... Mike has one of the finest characters I've ever known, Dr. Hardy. And that's what makes me feel so bad. If he didn't care about people, he wouldn't have gone down there in the first place, and he wouldn't be in all this trouble. If he didn't care about people, what kind of a scientist would he make? Why would he want to devote his entire life to working and teaching to make life easier for all of us? Please, don't take this opportunity away from him. It wasn't his fault. He had no idea this would happen. It isn't fair for you to take your account away from Mike because of this. He's impulsive. That's what makes him a creator. If it weren't for that, he wouldn't get ideas like the Gardenia Girl campaign, which is still great advertising. I don't have to tell you how lucky you are to have a man like Mike working for you. Look at his record. You can't dismiss that. Mr. Smith, Mike Jameson is the best pilot you have for the simple reason that flying is the most important thing in his life. If he weren't adventurous and courageous, he, he just wouldn't be Captain Mike Jameson. This used to be such a quiet business before you came along, Marcy. I'm on suspension. I know. I issued the order myself. It's none of my business, but uh, what were you doing in that sarong? Posing for the gardenia ad. Oh, I wondered. And then the fight started, and I had to... Yes, I read uh, the rest of it. Look. If you can find something a little less colorful to wear, like our regulation uniform, you and Mike can go back to uh, cloud hopping. Uh, what do you mean by cloud hopping? Well, that's up to Marcy. Oh, she, she and Mike were getting along very well on the ground. No, that's not what she needs. She needs a guy like Mike, who's creative, impulsive. She told me so herself. Mr. Bellamy, you just heard Miss Lewis. She admires a man of courage. Oh, she admires a man of courage. Now, wait a minute. A man of courage. I have to disagree Gentlemen, with you. She needs I a kind of girl. A man who will direct her. American Airlines flight for the Mercury for Chicago and New York. Now, boarding at American. Hey, Marcy. Hey, Mike. Oh, oh, now, wait a minute. Well, I've got to get a board. I don't know. Mike, I have to leave. Look, That's not my time. Look, Marcy, I don't know how to say this. Look, Marcy, I don't know how to say this. Marcy. Marcy, I, I've got to talk to you oh, alone. Now, just a minute. Please. Look, I've got to say this before you leave. You don't mind. Look, Dad, tell me you're leaving. You this is important. Well, I'm, I'm glad I got here. Well, look, look, Marcy. I never thought I'd have to propose in front of a crowd, but... Marcy, will you marry me? Oh, Mike. Remember what we said about the world being filled with wonderful people talking strange languages? We could listen to them together. You've got the whole world to fly around you. You could be awfully happy, Marcy. Well, I... Marcy! I've... Marcy, that's wrong for you. You and I are not going to watch history. We're going to make it. It's ideas that move the world, Marcy. That's where your excitement is, the same as mine. Besides, those six kids need a father. Marcy! Yes, Mike? There's not much more I can say. All oh, this sounds pretty wonderful. Then why are you here, Mike? Because I love you. Oh, Marcy, the, 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 you don't have to say anything. Being married to a teacher wouldn't be very exciting. And I... Oh, you're going to be surprised. Hello, what? Hello, Mr. Chips. Mr. Chips. Final call, American Airlines, flight for the Mercury. Oh, Mr. Chips. Oh, what's up? We have to go. Where are we going? Oh, Mike. Mike. Are you sure, Marcy? Oh, yes. It's simple bioluminescence. It's what? 
He lights up. Lights up? Goodbye. Go on. Goodbye, Marcy. Marcy, here's your clearance slip. Hey, that's an extra passenger. He's with me. I'm with her. Hey, Marcy, you can't do that. It's against the rules. Marcy! Marcy! She can't do that. It's against the rules. Rules weren't made for Marcy. They sure weren't. Well, we got each other. Yeah.